Metric two of four is test positivity rate. Note that this is different from the absolute number of positive tests. Rather, what we are looking at here is the percentage of tests that come back positive. Why we really care about the test positivity rate is because it's a really good indicator of whether there's widespread testing going on in a given community. Carol from Kansas asked a great question. How do you determine if increasing positive rates are associated with increases in testing or of real increases in infection in a community? Here, we'll address Carol's question by explaining why decreasing rather than increasing positive test rates are associated with increases in testing. Again, note that positive test rates are different from absolute positive test numbers. The reason that positive test rates indicate increases in testing is that, as research shows, when we increase test capacity, we move from testing only the sickest people, such as those who have been hospitalized, to those who may not even have COVID in order to capture asymptomatic cases, including people identified through contact tracing, which is something we'll talk about later. Therefore, as the number of tests increase, we'd expect the test positivity rate to drop. Let me illustrate this for you. In the slide, there are three different scenarios that you can see. You'll also see that every icon has a color, red or green, and represents a person who is tested for COVID. Red means the test was positive and that person is infected. Green means the test was negative and the person is not. In the first scenario, you can see a total of 10 colored icons, two which tested positive and eight which tested negative. That means the test positivity rate was two out of 10 or 20%. In the second scenario, there are a total of 20 colored icons. And again, two which tested positive, but 18 which tested negative, which means that the test positivity rate was two out of 20 or 10%. Finally, in the third scenario, every single person in the community of 100 people was tested. Again, two came back positive and the rest came back negative. This brings us to a test positivity rate of two out of 100 or 2%. So why does any of this matter? As you can see from this illustration, in the first scenario, the test positivity rate is really high and that's because not many people are being tested. On the other hand, in the third scenario, the test positivity rate is fairly low at 2% because every single person in the community was tested. We look at the test positivity rate for states and for counties to understand how much testing is really going on. If a state has a really high test positivity rate, then it's an indication that there isn't a ton of testing happening in the first place. By contrast, if we see that a state or county has a low test positivity rate, then it's a good indication that there isn't a lot of testing going on. It's helpful to look at the rate achieved by other countries who have successfully contained COVID and are operating at normal or close to normal levels of activity. As of May, the test positivity rate was 0.7% in Taiwan, 0.7% in New Zealand, and a little bit higher, 1% in Australia. Here's an example of Buffalo County, Nebraska, and how their test positivity rate has evolved over the course of this pandemic. In April, you can see that it hit about 20% which signals that it was mostly the people who had serious symptoms who were getting tested and that there wasn't widespread testing happening yet, for instance, of asymptomatic or at-risk individuals. But over time, Buffalo County has increased their testing cap capabilities and the test positivity rate has thus gone down over time, which signals that a more representative group of people in the county and not just the sickest people have access to testing. 